Okay, Waitley Finance Committee meeting, February 7th, 2023. Um, in attendance, would could you identify yourself as we go around the room? This is for everybody at home and us. Myself at home, Paul Antea. Tom Mahar. Donna Wiley. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I took your chin. I said it. There you go. Let's go. Tom Mahar. All right. Randy Doherty. Jim Kirkendall. Dan Kennedy. Dan, Donna Wiley. And, uh, Randall, and for the select board, we have Fred Barron. And at home, we have uh, Joyce Palmer Fortune. Joyce. Okay. Everybody's in. Very good. Okay, let's start off the meeting uh, following the agenda, and we will do a the election of officers. This would be for chair and for vice chair, and we will take nominations first. I nominate Paul Antea for chairman. Second. Are there any Third, other? Uh, are there any other nominations? If that be the case, we will take a roll call vote. Um, yay or nay? Tom? Yay. Jim? Yes. Dan? Yes. Brenda? Yay. Donna? Yes. Patty? Abstain? I guess I can vote for myself. I'm not sure. But I am anyway. Yes. Um, so that is confirmed. Next, we will go for the vice chair. Do I have nominations? I will nominate Tom Maha. Second. We will go around the room for another vote. Jim. Yes. This is for, this is for the vice chair for Tom. Jim. Yes. Dan. Yes. Donna. Yes. Brenda? Yes. I will say yes. Tom, do you accept? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's out of the way. Okay. The second part of the agenda is for the minutes of the last meeting. Has everybody read them? I'm sure they have. Um, do I have a motion? I make a motion. We approve the minutes of the January 24th, 2023 Finance Committee meeting. Second. Okay, we will take, we will do a roll call to oh, accept them. Oh. Hello? Yes, Donna, um, I have a correction. Okay. Uh, I, I did, it's in the middle of a long paragraph on the first page. I did not ask for an enrollment breakdown of the schools, which we get all the time. I asked for something else, but I suggest that we just strike the sentence. <laughs> I'll ask my question when we meet with the schools people. That's all right. That um, could, you refer, could, could you refer to that specifically so Amy knows what to take out? Yeah, it's a sentence that begins with my name, Donna, and it's about midway through the Just paragraph three. Oh, Donna would like an enrollment breakdown of the schools at a future meeting. Could you just strike that sentence? Yep. Okay. Paul, Paul, can I ask one question? Because I don't know protocol here. I just read the minutes, they all seem completely accurate to me. But it's a hybrid meeting, and there were people in by Zoom who weren't identified. Maybe that's normal, but like Joyce Fortune and others were there and participated. Maybe those need, need not be reflected in the minutes. I'm just trying to educate myself. <clears throat> okay, so there were other individuals um, who were in the Zoom that were not accounted for in yeah. the meeting. And those people specifically are whom again? I just read the minutes and saw a hybrid and then thought I would see the, who was in on Zoom. And it maybe maybe it doesn't need to be there. I'm not trying to be a personality. Okay, because you were there live, you were not on Zoom. Correct. Okay, could, could 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 we have that correction, Amy, for uh yeah. for the Is final revision? So, yeah. so, so typically, what we'll do is we'll list just the just the board members on the meeting. Excuse me, on the meeting minutes, 
So that was a finance committee meeting only. So we typically only would list the finance committee members. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But so for this meeting, for yeah. instance, it, it'll be different. This is a joint meeting between the select board and the finance committee. So um, we will be listing everybody. Okay. I just didn't know protocol. Oh. Yeah. If somebody had like a public comment from online, then they would be listed as well. Joyce definitely. Yeah. Talked. Right. Yeah, I was there last time, but I was there as a as an observer, a member of the public. And and there was a time when I said something. I don't know if it's reflected in the minutes because I didn't I didn't get them, but I don't care. You say whatever you want about me in your minutes. It's always <laughs> I'm good. sure it's I'm sure it's fine. It's always good. It is fine. I just wasn't. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I know that's a confusing point. I so I agree with you. It says hybrid, and then it only yeah. says people are in the room, maybe. Who's because everybody was present at all the community members were present on the other day? Fair enough. So, I, like if you were on Zoom, it would say, oh, sure. we Zoom. Sure. Amy, question. Um, is Patty on? Yes, sir. Patty, welcome. Terrific. Um, okay. So, following the um, agenda as brian put out to us um a discussion of the of, of the budget as we have in front of us brian would you like to uh take over here please paul we didn't vote on the accepting the minutes of the meeting that's why we have a vice chair everybody because the <laughs> vice chair picks oh, up what brian, the chair drops. very nice very very nice okay let's let's vote on the minutes Hey, From Paul, the by the meeting. way, yes, I am here. Okay, Patty. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, okay, we will vote on the minutes. Tom. Uh, yes. As Jim. As, as amended. As amended. As, as amended. Sorry. Patty. W Patty, we're voting yes. on the minutes. No, no, yes, fine. Okay. Yes. Donna. <laughs> Uh, he wasn't there. there. It's going to be like a soul. Oh, my God. All right. I can't. Either I wasn't there. That's right. Donna, are you there? Yes, as amended, yes. As amended, yes. Brenda, minutes as amended. Yes. Dan, minutes as amended. Yes. Paul, minutes as amended. Yes. Did I leave anybody out? I've got all check marks. Okay. Jim, Jim, Jim. yes. Jim. Jim. I left Jim out. Oh my Jim, I did leave you out. Sorry. Okay. All right. That's unanimous. Okay. All right. So here we go. Now, Brian, bring us up to speed regarding the backstory on the budget. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I think the best way to do this is, or the way that I'd like to talk about it is I'd like to go over the the document called comprehensive line item budget document because that's been changed a little bit since um, compared to what we've used in the past. Um, so I'd like to talk about that and then I'd like to go over and just talk about some of these, not in detail, but some of these um, budgets really and just sort of what, what I think is going on behind the scenes. Um, and really what we want, I think what we want to get out of tonight is um, and it's typical of, of the, the meeting that the first meeting joint meeting that we have is who are we inviting back to have discussions with about about their budgets. Um, so I'm happy to take questions at any time. Um, but I'm going to share the most people should have got the. Well, everybody should have received the email for the that has the budgets and uh, the comprehensive uh, comprehensive budget. Um, outstanding budgets, budgets that we don't have are, I'm trying to do this while I'm talking, um, we don't have, well, I received the police department um, earlier today, which I haven't gotten through. Um, we have not received transfer station, and obviously we have not received any of the school budgets, and we have not received the water department enterprise fund budget. Um, and we can talk about those. Um, can everybody see that? Yes. Or have the copy printed out. So 
in terms of how this works, um, we have total budgets. So I'll just we'll just talk about 2023. We have a total budget column. We have an operating budget column. The difference between those two columns are we have an enterprise fund for the water department, and the water department enterprise fund pays a certain percentage of those budgets based on. Um, I think this has only been looked at once when the enterprise fund was created. Um, how much of you know staff time or how much of that expense is attributable to the water department? Um, so I always forget which computer is sharing. Um, so you'll see there's different percentages over here. Um, so two percent of the total budget of the Town Administrator Select Board budget is paid for by the Enterprise Fund. That's how that's working. Yeah. Um, in the past, this one wasn't always shown like this. I think it's just better to be able to see sort of the whole picture that's going on. There was also a suggestion, I think it was from Patty last year, um, about having the differences in green and red to be able to see what's going on easier. Um, so I also added that. Um, so that's what's going on. Um, with this document. The other changes um, that I made, and I just thought it was, I reorganized reorganized some of these uh, numbers in, in, in budgets in terms of how they are in the budget book um, with sort of the bigger items up, up top. Um, and I also combined some of the smaller <clears throat> items that we used to have in the budget. We used to have a you know, town account software item that was voted on every year separately for seven, uh, $750. We used to have um, a town report line, separate line item for $500. And it, it just it just sort of organically grew for historical reasons that didn't make a lot of sense. Um, you know, we had website, website was one item and then computer repair was another item and then emails was another separate budget. So I just tried to just sort of streamline things a little bit better to make it a little bit more manageable. Um, all of those budgets are, they didn't disappear. They're, they're included within, you know, within these other department budgets um, that I think they're more appropriately, that they more appropriately fall under. But they're smaller ticket items that just made the budget long. <clears throat> Some of these I even wanted to combine even further, but I, but, but I didn't. Um, like payroll services and Financial audit. I mean, those are things that sort of probably financial audit probably go under town account. Related. But um, so there was some some consolidation there to make it a little bit manageable. Um, are there any questions? I mean, I guess the last thing I want to mention is the columns that say um, twenty three to twenty four. Those are obviously fiscal years difference in money and, and percent difference. Those are comparisons between the operating budgets. Um, so that's with the enterprise fund overhead costs taken out. Right. Um, and these, these figures will change as, as we go through the budget process. Um, and we obviously have totals at the bottom that are pretty much meaningless at this point, because we're missing, well, we're missing more than half our budget because we don't have the schools, um, and police and transfer station are, are also not small, uh, small ticket items. Um, uh, yep, that sheet is not in our books. Right? Um, it's probably in the beginning part, maybe you put it in the beginning. They have the, the, the top, though. yeah, oh, it might be in the seat. Yeah. 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 No, we don't have uh, we don't have something a little different. We got that in the email. Uh, it's uh, is a second tab to the spreadsheet. Sorry. That's okay. It's an email. They can see yeah, it. We've got yeah. We'll get it out there. It's in the email. Yeah. Um, but yes, thank you. We'll print them out. Um, but yes, that's okay. We will get you print copies. We have to consolidate. Very big fun. Can we talk about any of these? or? Um, I was going to start talking. I was going to start going through and just sort of giving okay. some background. But if you have questions. Well, the obvious question is what's going on with the Conservation Commission? 
I can get there, yeah. Okay, that's yep, fine. If you want. I didn't know how you were going to do this. Um, Go ahead. Right, so I'll give you background. The idea being that this will help our discussions when the when the folks come in that are presenting the budget. Yeah. Um, so that they're not starting from scratch in terms of, you know, in terms of the conversations with us. Um, so any other questions about the, the budget sheet itself? Um, the other tab, obviously, that's what... Uh, we have seen again that's this is just a comparison of the operating budgets right. uh, but obviously these numbers are going these are pretty much meaningless now without right um, just as a <laughs> and I while we're in the while we're on the topic of missing budgets um I was told by uh by Maureen Nichols that we would have we will have the budget uh well before we meet with them and I spoke with Darius Modesto on Saturday, and he assured me that we would have the budgets well before the meeting at Frontier uh, that we're having with, with them. So that's that's what I was told. Good. I'm going to keep going. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. I'm done. I just want to let let's let you know about that so um so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to start going down the list here where i where i think we should have conversations can um, i ask you to minimize this a little bit that's not Please? yes that'd be good um I, just so i can see it full screen yes <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, do you want me to the opposite of minimizing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to zoom? Go the other way. Oh my god. You zoom said that's right. No, it did. Will this help? Beautiful. That's perfect. Thank you. Yep. Um, the first one I wanted to mention was, I'm going to take these out of order, but um, town clerk. Actually, I'm going to take these out of order because it only makes sense in my head. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go to treasure, talk about treasurer collector first. Um, as everybody knows, Lynn is going to be retiring as treasurer collector. Um, Lynn has been here a long time. Um, we have advertised for the position. It has probably been out since, probably been out for a month now. Um, and we do not have qualified people applying for the job. Um, Great. Sort of in the, in the municipal sector, this, we've seen this coming. Um, the, the average age of, of municipal, you know, long time municipal employees is, it is close to retirement and there's not a lot of people in the pipeline that are out there looking for work um so um this is a challenge that we currently have um the position as it's currently constituted in, in town is a 30 hour week position and you know the annual pay is around forty six thousand. Uh, for a year. At the same time, there have been several towns that were advertising in Western Mass, and their starting range is, is 77000 for a 40-hour week fully benefited position. Um, so between a lack of you know qualified people for the job and what we're offering, it, it's, it's really going to be a challenge to fill that position, but it's a pretty important position that we're going to need to fill. Um, we're exploring different, uh, different moves internally, um, as to if people might be interested in, in moving into that position. Um, Lynn has offered to stay on. I think she can work up to 18 hours as quote unquote retired. Um, and she could help with the transition of, of, of somebody. Um, and that could be, um, that somebody could be our current town clerk. So that's why I wanted to talk about this in, in this order. Um, if that were to happen, 
Um, and there still needs to be a, a the applicant still need to go for the screening committee, but I'm going to sort of play along here for a second. So <clears throat> the musical chairs that that may happen. So um, if our town clerk were to become our treasure collector, that would leave a vacancy in the town clerk um, position. The town clerk position in Whaley is an elected position. Um, the select board would appoint an interim town clerk until the next annual election in June. Um, at that point, it would be open to <coughs> anyone that who wants to pull papers and run for the position. Um, there may be um, some internal interest in moving to the town clerk position, which would of course create <laughs> another vacancy in another position, which, which, which that position may have a little bit easier to fill. Um, but um, that's just sort of, I guess what what's happening, and I just wanted the, the finance committee to just be aware of that. There's a lot of musical chairs that may happen. And just um, know with a vacancy already in the assistant. Right. So the, the community development. Right. So there's right. there's also our community development person, Hannah, who had been here for just over a year, left at the beginning of January. She was able to get a um um, a position with the city of Somerville, completely remote, so she uh, didn't need to move, and it was about double the pay of what we were offering. So not only are we competing against municipalities that are physically, geographically close to us, now there's these remote positions that happen, and you get and you get Eastern Eastern Mass wages and live in Western Mass. I mean. Yeah. that's a pretty good deal right yeah um yeah. but it's so it's a challenge that we continue to face so riddle me this have we um tapped into uh, the retirees in the area have we tapped into i don't know uh for you know the for cog and all that <clears throat> um There are a lot of people, I being one of them, that have recently retired and taken on other jobs. Uh, I just want for you, Patty, if you run for town clerk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I was going to say, what do you mean tap into? Uh, I guess well, I don't know how to tap into retirees. Um, okay, well, maybe I have to um, help with that. There are a I lot mean, of retirees out there. I would, I would love to be able to reach them. I guess that's my response. Yes. Um, okay. But I, I don't know where to do that, I guess, or, or how to do that. Yeah. You no. would maybe be in the same boat that you're going to be in with Lynn, and that if someone is... 65 or whatever their number is and they're retired and collecting social security and or a pension they can only work a certain amount of hours before they get penalized right let's right. go to the, when they when they start collecting right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but there is a huge swath of retirees from the federal government. And uh, I think I might be able to tap into that, but I'm not sure. Um, so Patty, are you saying that you're willing to work with Brian to, to uncover some of these individuals that might sure. have interest? Yeah. Okay, Brian and I, Patty, I will, will, Patty will try to job that to you. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Brian? Go. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, uh, while we're at it, um at some point in the I don't know when this is gonna happen, but I think there will also be turnover in the assessor's office at some point. Um and again, it's a it's a job that we have a very experienced person in. Um 
who is, um, you know, working that, speaking of, uh, you know, working that 19, 18 hour week position. Uh, so at, at some point, I think that's also a, a spot we'll be, we'll be needing to fill at some point. This um, year? This year, Brian? I don't know for sure. Um, but it, I, I think some point in the near future. That's um, elected, we're, right? In a couple of years, I no, don't imagine. No, appointed. No, it's appointed. Assessor's okay. clerk. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's, clerk. it's one of those okay. jobs where we, where we have a really experienced person who's working a lower number of hours and, and getting the job done. But the pipeline, again, even for you know people experienced in, in the assessing field is really limited. Um, Brian, do you think you are uh, well informed about other towns, as the other small towns in the area that also have important positions that are not full time? So that if one of our really important part time positions comes open, we might be able to talk with another town about maybe combining and making, you know, giving somebody full-time work. I understand that's all, you know, it's all depends on exact circumstances and timing. Um, yeah, that would be an avenue that we would explore. Oh, uh, so sharing employees. I thought you were mentioning if we were going to steal them. <laughs> no. That, Which I'm mentioning not a well <laughs> <laughs> Typically, we're the one that gets stolen from. From yeah. um, right. well, it works both ways. Yeah. Um, so uh, we got to find a smaller town to pick on. Yeah. <laughs> but that'd be tough. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's gonna. Be, it's just gonna be something we're gonna we're gonna deal with over the next, you know, year or two as, um, as things play out. Um, yeah, it's. I, I think it, part of it comes down to. Um, I think municipal uh, municipal work used to be, you know, one of the advantages was the flexibility of it, um, and staying close to home. But now people can work from their bedroom, so in the private sector, and you know, it's yeah. one of those one of those advantages that we had doesn't exist anymore. Um, but yeah. as a as a comment, with. <laughs> A community development person working remotely for the town of Somerville. I, I I just have a hard time grasping how effective that person can be when they're never in the community. And they're in they're they're they're, they're two hours away by car and they're expected to do whatever they're expected to do in that environment. It, it, it's just I know it's kind of I know it sounds good now, and they're they're reaching for straws because they can't fill it locally. But I don't see that as a long term um, working relationship. But anyway, and and we have this one, and until until we we see two or three towns around us being stolen by you know Weston and uh, and Bridgewater and and. In those towns, I, I think this is a one-off here. Just as a point. Well, I hope so. Um, I don't want to train another one. I have from leave. Yeah. Um, but it, it's what we talk about. It. It's just sort of the environment that. You know, can can I? Can I be the snake in the room? Absolutely. Um, um, okay, I'm just going to give a little history. I just recently retired from the fe federal government. Um, I work for a private agency now, and everyone is having a really, really hard time hiring for anything. And which is why I was saying, look to people that you can hire temporarily that have done this job, regardless of what it is. You're not gonna find someone, okay, I shouldn't say it that way. Um, I find it highly unlikely that you will find someone to take any job 
at what we can afford to pay. Because, because the hiring market is just that competitive. So I think that we need to look at you know, uh, different ways of hiring. And, you know, whether it's part-time, full-time, remote, I don't know, but we have to be creative in our hiring tactics. Okay. I, I, I think everyone would agree with those thoughts. And as I've been told in the past, if you want to bring those thoughts to the group, please have specific answers to your thoughts so that we can move on with the process. And I think thinking about it is wonderful, um, but the actual, the actual doing is what we need. We don't have an outreach employment service. Uh, we advertise in, you know, the, um, the, the way we've always done it. Um, are there other, are there other avenues for advertising? I guess there might be. If you know of those, please bring that forth to um, select board or to Brian, and um, that would be welcomed. Um, but that's where we are with the hiring process. We're in a tough spot. Um, and if you have thoughts, specific thoughts as to what to do, then bring those forward. Okay. To the select board, not the finance. select board. Right. Joyce, Joyce has her hand yeah. up. Just to, just to express an opinion, I think the promoting from within is a really good strategy, right? Um, and I think uh, that's certainly worth pursuing, but I also think um, we, we have to have a, a broad base of strategy. So um, I don't have any problem with following up with Brian and Patty following up to see Maybe they'll come up with a really good candidate for some position and we can promote from within and we can do a combination of things. But I, I really like to promote from within because we're getting people we know and trust and people we can have confidence in uh, you know, staying and uh, doing well at their training and so on. So I I just wanted to say that, you know, the, the part, the Brian is brilliant part. I want to make sure that gets on the air, you know. Okay. Terrific. Okay, Patty, thank you very much. And uh, Joyce, again, uh, for uh, voicing those thoughts. Um, okay, Brian. Uh, just the next one I wanted to touch on was, was town building operations. Um, a lot of this is, is um, utility costs, natural gas and electricity. One of the things that I hope will, will really create savings here is that we currently have a uh, MVP grant to put a solar array on the town offices, um, and it, will, it should be sized to more than offset. Um, well, it depends how we go. Well, it should at least offset our electricity costs in this building, um, and if we can go larger to offset additional um, town electric accounts, we'll do that as well. Um, so I hope that will at least help um, over the next. 15, 20 years in terms of keeping our electricity costs down. Um, so hopefully that will happen this spring, maybe going into the summer. Um, and we'll have that, um, you know, we'll have that in place. Um, uh, information technology, this is the, this is a group that I sort of grouped um, some of our tech or computer items together. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of what's happening is, and I'm, I'm going to sort of date myself here, but um, it, it used to be a time where you could, where you could get the, the Microsoft Windows, whatever it was, 97 CD, 
and then you could use that as long as it, then it will, as long as you went. Now everything is subscription based. Adobe PDF, Adobe Pro is subscription based. Windows is subscription. It, it's all subscription based. Emails are subscription based. So um, those are just recurrent costs that we have. I mean, Zoom, Zoom is a license now. Uh, we can't pay for that with with, with COVID monies like what we could in the past. Um, so that's really what, what's going on with information technology. Um, Conservation Commission. So this is a long way to get to, to Tom's question. Um, this is a request, and, it, and Scott Scott Jackson will, has offered to come, and I think you know you should come. Um, at some point, so so Scott's the chairperson of the cons, cons Com and has been for a long time. I think he said eighteen years. He's been on the cons Com, I think he said twenty nine. Um, he's looking to get out the Conservation Commission, um, and he does a lot of work. He he does a lot of work for free, essentially. Um, so there was a there was a discussion with through the FERCOG about which towns would be interested in a uh, a shared conservation agent similar to a board of health agent. Um, the conservation does inspections. They do sign off on permits. They do site visits. They do. Um, all that, but, but I think Scott can probably speak to that better than I can. But that's that's what's that's what's going on with that budget. Um, in terms of, so I want to just talk about some of the ones from uh, CRS Tritown Beach District. Mm -hmm. Tritown Beach District is an independent district. There are. Tritown Beach Commissioners uh, from both Waitley and Deerfield. Um, I think uh, it is worth requesting their presence here, uh, obviously with, with, with such an increase in their budget. Um, they continue to deal with, uh, there's some type of invasive weed in the pond that they have to, you know, uh, manage or else it washes up on the, on the beach and people don't like to go there. Um, I think we, we've been through this with the senior center. I think we would want to see usage, um, you know, numbers as to as to how many people in Whitley are using it. Um, this is one of those, and I'll try to highlight these. This is one of those, um, this is one of those budget line items that have the ability to generate their own revenue. Um, and they did, I think they included an estimated, you know, 12,700. Um, but it's just something to, to keep in mind. Um, Brian, think, Brian, can I ask just um, a question on that Tritown Beach? Do they have some type of just short-term plan as to what this place is going to look like and how it's going to service the people of these towns? A, a plan, black and white. If it exists, I, I have not seen it. Okay. I would have a very, very hard time giving them 10 cents if they don't have that. So I will yeah. ask. Well, the other side of the coin is they're asking for 14357 from us. What are they asking for from Deerfield? And what are they chances right. saying that they're... And I, you know, I, I'm... 73, yeah. Yeah, they're, gonna get, they're getting 70-something percent. Who is our... Representative Jonathan. Jonathan Edwards and Andy Mahalik. Mahalik. So when the town spent 10 months writing its open space and recreation plan just a little over a year ago, the first step uh, for the Tri Town Beach was to be a really serious analysis about that land and what is feasible on it. Yeah. And now we're in our second season past that plan, and I don't believe that has happened. I agree. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. They obviously got to, so they got to come in here and right. talk and, to us. And, yep. And I, what what I've seen, and I haven't been involved in it, is there's there's some analysis of the the actual water body itself in terms of dealing with the. With the weed problem, but a larger study that you're talking about, I, I I'm not aware of any if it's happening. So the question we could ask. Mm -hmm. um, Recreation commission. 
And I just wanted to highlight that because, I mean, this is another, and it, it comes back to, I think, something Donna said last year, if I remember correctly. Um, it was, so this is one of the, this is one of the, the boards that has a pretty significant revolving fund. Um, and um, we don't really ever see it. Uh, I mean, we see it in the reports, right? Um, but we don't really see, we don't really see a breakdown of it. So if that's something that we want to pursue, um, I can ask um, our town accountant to, to run a report on that account to see how that's being used. Um, and the reason I mentioned that is because um, my understanding of how it was supposed to be used was, was that was going to pay for sort of the, um, it's a user fee, right? That the that the parents pay for their kids to play. So it should be it should be covering things like umpires, referees, you know, sports equipment, those types of things. But I was noticing in the in the FY22 budget, some of the like some of those referee and umpire costs were coming out of the, the regular budget. So I think maybe a discussion about what what's what do we what do we anticipate the revolving fund covering as opposed to the operating budget covering. Yeah, and I and I think trick two, in regards to the recreation commission, um, we have a director on board in that to oversee this now, and we're paying him now. And from my understanding, the person is pretty active, and um, has done some has done uh, some pretty good communication. Um, so. I believe he's on the ball, and I believe he is a person that, Brian, you could approach and say, you know, we'd like a breakdown of how the funds are being used. Um, and I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, I, I wouldn't anticipate it being a problem. Um, but it was, it was a comment that was made last year to try to look at some of these other accounts as to how those expenses relate to the essentially their their tax funded budget. Um, it, it, it really most of their budget is for is for you know field maintenance costs and, and yeah. Yeah. You know, costs associated yeah. with the park there. Um, now there's some, some girls softball field over in the corner. One of the things I saw on here is more money for the field of the fire station you know as long as that stuff is getting used mm -hmm. but yeah um and, and the other thing that 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 really needs to be discussed and, and and i think i need to have a conversation with darius to get it started is frontier does all the maintenance at early yeah um, they mow main, mow. they they mow all the fields they fertilize all you know they, they pay for the fertilizer they they do everything with the fields there and and, and they look really good um they do so um that, that's not a cost that we incur it's sort of a quid pro quo for they you the, can use they the fields but you need to take care of the fields yeah um just so that's that's something that that needs to be a little bit refined i think but that's that's something yeah. i that we need that administration needs to do we're not necessarily necessarily looking for more money or money period from frontier we just want to have a better understanding of who's doing what right and, and we also need to think about and i don't know what the status of the of the, the new fields in deerfield are um, right wasn't there a park that was going to be yes and i don't know created there with some ball and i don't know how that's going to impact if frontier were to ever say we don't need this anymore yeah. then that's a cost that the town is going to have to make a decision on right right um so that's in the future yeah um uh, south county senior center um <laughs> again i think that I, I would imagine the finance committee still wants to see usage um i think well, well, at least from what I know, um, it was what or partially what's happening here is that uh, quite honestly, the South County Senior Center was in a building that was essentially a free ride. Um, you know, it Waitley 
unlike what, what we're doing with scams, paying you know rent as part of the assessment. Deerfield, South County Senior Center was in the building. They, we paid maintenance, but it was there was no costs essentially other than maintenance to stay in that building to have that facility. Well, now that facility has really passed its you know past its prime. So now we're seeing these these costs of having space somewhere else come into the budget. Um, and those aren't free. Uh, that space isn't free. And I'm, I'm sure that the, the director will talk about those as well. Um, there's also something also happened with, and I forget the name of the grant. There used to be a grant that, that municipalities were assured every year. Um, SIG grant or formula grant, I don't remember which one it was, which one it was called. Um, the state decided to make those competitive. Um, so that's no longer funding that we can rely on every single year. My expectation is that it will be applied for every year, but it's not funding that's set in stone that, um, so that we're going to get SIG SIG. Yeah. So I, I think that's also a, a, a point of discussion that we have. Yeah. She, um, she had a pretty extensive write-up and, uh, in that write-up, I believe they are saying that there are 41 uh, people from Waitley that are enrolled in that senior center. So, um, you know, if if that is the case, then um, then obviously uh, we would be responsible for um, for the money. So, um, so we'll see. Um, Let's see. Um, we're going to public health. Um, although we don't have a transfer station budget, um, I did have a conversation with Fran Fortino. Um, the holdup really here is hauling costs um, for trash and recyclables. Um, Wickles is the one that they used to use in the past. Um, and they don't have a firm price. Um, you know, for the hauling at this point, it, it may it may come at some point where he just needs to provide a number and, and we'll go with that. But um, he wasn't sure at this point. One of the other thing that that one of the other things that has changed from a couple of years back is the recycling market used to be in our favor in terms of that we used to be paid for recycling, um, you know, recycling material. Now it's flipped. And we actually still we have to pay to get rid of our recyclables. Um, it's still cheaper than getting rid of the trash. But yeah, it is cheaper than getting rid of the trash, um, but it's just something that's that's flipped. There was, I think, there was a couple months where we were either breaking, at least in terms of the the market value. I think it was pretty much even, but that has since gone back not into our favor, um, and we still have costs. For all the recyclables as well. So, um, and this is one of those, uh, the transfer station is again one of those budget line items that, that can generate, they can and do generate revenue. Yeah. Um, yeah. With, with uh, I was going to say pays, yeah, pay as you throw, right? Not throw as you pay, right? Pay as you throw. Um, so, uh, we can take a look at that. I think in FY22, I think. It was about forty-two thousand dollars that they brought in. Yeah, um, and they also I, have something called the uh, recycling dividends program. They have two uh, revolving accounts that they could also be accessed yeah. um, for specific items. But, mm -hmm. I have a question about you know um, when we get there, um, the transfer station obviously can follow and watch the bags going into the compactor. But there is no way for the attendees, the attendants to understand if anyone's coming up and just putting recyclables into those large bins. I, I, I don't know how they do it. Maybe they know everybody in town, maybe they don't. But uh, I would think we would have the opportunity to if you want to use those recycling bins, then you buy a sticker for your car that says Waitley Dump. And uh, 
and it costs you X plus um, to do that. Because uh, right now, anybody, and I, I, there are a number of people that I see that who I don't know, I don't know everybody in town, but I've been here 30 some years. And, um, and there are people there that are, I knew people I see all the time. So um, I, I think that may be um, something we, we should discuss with them. Okay. I agree. Yeah. So we're going to need to talk to them. Yeah. Brian, can I ask you about the library? Sure. Mm -hmm. Try. Yeah. No, is that line item just the um, architect's fee? <laughs> that would be something separate. That would be just library operations, I believe. Okay. But Brian can explain that better than me. Did I miss you? I don't think no, we didn't talk about it. Library. That's just regular library that's operations, right? right? That's just their operating budget. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's their annual budget. Um, public safety. Just. Um, well, I want to touch on a couple of these um, changes. Brian, in the fire. Yeah. Brian. When you're done with when you're done with one section, please come back to the group and ask. If there are any further questions sure. uh, before moving on. Thank you. Any further questions on public health? Oh, oh wait, that wasn't the last one. What was the last one? Oh, was it? Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, public safety. So fire department, uh, our existing fire chief will reach mandatory retirement age in June. Um, so we are actively seeking uh, replacement. Um, there is a posting out there currently for the position. Um, so right now the chief position is the stipend position. Um, although it has hours attached to it, it's paid as a stipend for it. I think we pay $10,000, $11,000 for, you know, for our fire chief. I think that's what stipend is plus you know, hourly wages at, um, attending calls, right? Um, we're hopeful that we'll find um, interested people. There's some interest internally. Um, and one of the things I, I, I think we'll see um, is likely uh, a refocused budget, hopefully. Um, the finance committee, at least since I've been here, has always had animated conversations. Is that a good way to put it? Yeah. About the fire department budget. Um, so hopefully that can be a little bit more focused moving forward. Um, and there's also talk about wanting to sort of refocus on training um, and uh, retention and recruitment as well. Um, as, as, as people get older, I mean, they don't participate as much. So, um, I think one of the things that we'll end up having to look at is the, is the firefighter wage. Um, I think there might be a request going to the personnel committee. Firefighter wage right now is $17.99. Um, but so 17, so almost $18 an hour. Um, I think that's something that the personnel committee will be asked to look at. Minimum wage is $15 an hour, and you can do a lot less dangerous jobs for yeah. <laughs> for probably that much. Um, so that's something that that I think the personnel committee will be asked to look at. Um, and then I think the capital plan also has, um, at least on the capital plan for planning purposes, the replacement of a fire truck, which is not cheap over the next, might be within within the, the next That's five years, maybe. dollars So, yeah, so the last one was going to be almost five hundred thousand. And, that was, and that, that was used. That was not very long ago, was no. it? No. Well, time flies. I was about. Yes. I think it. Three years, four years. I think it was about six years because it was around when I started. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, South County EMS. Any questions about fire? I guess. Yeah, just uh, before we get off fire, could I? I think I missed a little bit of uh, with respect to the fire chief. Um, at this point in time, you said it's a stipend plus an hourly based on calls, right? Yeah. What's that stipend again? 
I think it's somewhere between ten and eleven thousand dollars a year. And what kind of a uh, and what kind of a workload does that entail from an hourly perspective? I mean, the job is the job is listed as is well. The job description says twenty hours. Uh, I think that that changes based on um, you know number of inspections, number of calls, um, really the the administrative aspects of the job. Yeah. Um, Okay. Okay. All righty. Um, uh, do you see any moving forward? Is this another position where we are going to have to incur additional uh, monies um, to up this to get people in? Um, short term, I. I don't think so. I think there's enough interest short term, um, because I think there's uh, people interested um, internally. Um, longer term, if, if we if we don't have that interest internally, if, if we get to that point, I think it's it's going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I I I would be just with any of these. And uh, I know the whole hiring side of it is, is not fun in that the, uh, the the marketplace is not screaming with uh, people who are coming to the door for employment. But um, from the town perspective and getting good people on board and, and, and ensuring that they are who they said they are going to be, that we have some kind, if in fact we have to pay people more money that we stagger that money and we do it in a fashion where it's almost like um, you come on in a probationary sense and then you work your way off that probation. And with that comes an increased salary of some sort. Um, so I, I, I would just think that to, uh, to ensure the quality of what we need downstream, that that sort of an approach um, might be looked at, okay? Sounds good. Uh, South County EMS. Um, so, I mean, the big ticket item here is that there's a capital assessment this year, right? Um, it's for the purchase of a new ambulance. Um, it's bad. That's, that's the request. I don't have much else to say about it. Um, I thought there was money set aside every year in their budget budget for capital expenses. I, I thought you thought that too. Or? I, well, I thought they had alternative sources of funding to help alleviate some of those costs. I apparently not. Um, we'll have to so it's a question yeah, we'll have to ask, right? Um, it, if because in the past they they paid for new ambulances in, in other ways, I think maybe that's why I have that opinion, right? Um, I didn't realize they were paying for them in other ways. I thought they had money in there was we every year in their budget there's a line item yeah. for capital expenses, and you know you could see over the years it would build up, it would go down, yeah. it would build up, it would go down. And now they're looking for you know whatever it is, almost fifty thousand dollars more. Uh, I'm going to need a pretty good explanation. You know, yeah. same, same old, same old. They, they got you, and you know, what are you going to do? Tell them you're not going to pay it. There's actually a sheet on that account in right. here, which is so simple. <laughs> but it's got a separate sheet. <laughs> yeah, there's a separate capital sheet there. It has numbers with parentheses around it, which are more. <laughs> um. I have a question about South County EMS, just for background. I was not on this committee when the town decided to merge its um, ambulance services. When we did that, was the rationale um, better service or was it also supposed to save us money? 
I, I just don't remember. I, mean, I, I remember the discussion. Certainly the town better meetings, but I wasn't probably there. better service because we were having problems yeah, getting I remember EMTs, right. you know, having qualified people respond yeah. like during the day and right. stuff. And I remember all that, but there was no argument that we were also spent less money. I don't, I don't, think, I I don't, I don't think there was. We right. knew it was going to cost more money, but yeah. it's steadily gone up, up, up right. dramatically over yeah. the years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But this is still for Waitley. When when you look at the numbers, I think it's still a bargain. Um, when you look at the total population of the town and that they are servicing the entire town. And I think, you know, to your point, there was a time, and I, th I think it's still here, where um, insurance and government want paramedics on there, not just EMTs. So they had to meet those kind of salaries. Um, but, you know, that said, you know, I... I I, I think we'd be hard pressed to be able to take that number and put it into a couple of uh, full time ambulances for the town. I think. Can I ask a question? Is this sure. a firm fixed price or is it a they get billed, we get billed as they react to anything with weight loop? Um, it's it's a, it's an assessment. It's a fixed price that we pay. Yeah, yeah. So it's a firm fixed price. We're paying that regardless of how many times they right. react to Waitley. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But he'll have that number breakdown. Um, number of calls. Oh yeah. Um, you know he's pretty good at that. I I, I don't doubt it. It just yeah. seems to me that it should be an hourly rate. Frankly, yeah. but okay. Um, so two things come to mind when when I see this. One is, um, we don't need to fund this through the the tax levy. If we want to fund it through capital funds or something else, that's a possibility. Um, and the other question I have is, if this is going to be a a recurring expense every, you know. Every five years, we're going to be asked for $50,000. I'd well, like to know that. It's going to be, um, if I'm, you know, I just read this thing quick and uh, it's 50000 this year. In five years, it's going to be 75000 And, you know, the way the, their price increases are for a new ambulance, I don't anticipate the cost coming down. No. So, that, so, so I guess my, my initial reaction is, Either we should start saving or yeah. they should start saving. Either way, right. yeah. we're going to pay extra money. Um, right. mm -hmm. But it would be nice to have these costs smoothed out a little bit and not necessarily, you know, every five years we're, you know, we're, we're getting, you know. Well, it looks like their retained earnings account has diminished because they were able, in fiscal 20, they covered 243000 Spin an ambulance completely, and now it's three seventy five, and the, the silk chart says they can only come up with a hundred thousand. So I think one of the questions should be, what do you have in your return retained earnings account, and how are you right and how are you and building it, or or the opposite, right? Or why is it not, or why is it not being built as it was in the past? And I'm 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 sure there's an answer, and I'm, I'm sure we'll probably hear it. Um, yep. But he's real good at explaining it. And we have to like it. He is. You know, same old, same old, Paul. Uh, we're going to get, they're looking for another 46000 from us, but they're looking for 142000 from Deerfield. No question. Yeah. yeah. That would be a tough sell, I'm afraid. Mm. Yep. Uh, police department budget. We'll speak nicely now that Don's here. <laughs> Did everybody know that Don is standing in the door? Yeah, you know, it's always, always say nice things. He's being very quiet so the owl doesn't pick him up. Uh -oh. <laughs> is, is Officer Bates on hand again? 
<laughs> wow. Oh, here was thank you. I thought I'd be able to see you, but wow. Two weeks, two meetings in a row. Wonderful. Okay. Oh, it's not minimized, huh? Okay. So Oh, now you can oh, see okay, you. Now you can see you. There you go. He can't see you though. I didn't know that I forgot I had computer minimized. Um, so obviously this is a discussion we'll have to have with, with Jim, unless he sends down. Um <laughs> just nothing yet. That's um, I mean the two things we're gonna you know hopefully I can hopefully we can get through it and I can send it out. Um really there, there's two issues here one and I think they both well one of them certainly really back to police reform um and the other one is um partially impacted by police reform and that's you know I think they're still looking for a, a, another full-time officer um our, I think part of that would help replace some of the losses that they're having with part-time officers hopefully replace you know some shift on the weekend yep and the other part of that is um, related to equipment, um, related to uh, cameras, body cameras, and tasers. There are new regulations coming out from, I think it's called Post C or Post. Uh, it's the police op uh, peace officer standards training commission. I think I get that right. Um, <laughs> they are implementing all regulations for body cameras and tasers and what we currently have um if jim is correct will no longer be compliant um so that's uh that going through the capital process right now but it's it's something that we're going to have to deal with so um, what you're showing right now is level funding i'm guessing that it's not level funding showing nothing. we don't have the budget uh, i just received earlier today okay so we're still waiting on their actual funding request correct yeah yeah okay. i'm just giving a quick quick overview and i'll just say that what we got from jim was in the capital committee last week and there are going to be things which are currently thought of as capital that may have to go into an annual budget because they'll involve like the software subscriptions and commitments to things that rather than one shot yeah purchases it's a yearly expense it because well, things that have not been yearly expenses may well become mm -hmm. what's our what's our manning right now on that police force full-time we have what two we have <laughs> Uh, Jim and Jim, Don. Jim and Don. Okay. And what and about Ross. part time? Nine ish. We had eight. Eight had eight. Six. I think we got six active. Six what's active. Gonna, so what's going to happen? Year and a half. It post uh, post the. At this point, everybody's breaking over. Um, so. We shouldn't lose any numbers that way. I may be speaking out of turn, but Jim's not here, but as far as our personnel, we were, yeah, we lost one that won't break over. Right. But now anybody who, anybody who bridges over would qualify to be hired as a full-time officer in any other police I department. Don't, don't you have to go to the theoretically, right? You, you would have, have to go to the full-time academy, right? That's a Jim call. Um, no, I think it's all because once you go through the Bridge Academy, you become so, certified as a police officer. Okay. So technically, they become the same certification as somebody as a full time. Right? Yep. Yep. Without going through all the hell and rigor that we did. Yeah. So what we've seen with small town waiting and employees will go yeah. somewhere else. I, I don't think the police department is any different. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Again, well, that's just part of the environment that that we're in. Yeah. Um, any other questions on public safety? That's what we see as budget. Any? Have there been any? Um, um, well, let's just say 
you know, the way the, um, you know, the way the ambulance service went when we sort of, uh, we, we went from a Waitley to a South County. Has there been any discussions on that happening with fire and police? Uh, no serious discussions that I've, that I've been aware of. Okay. All righty. Onward. Uh, public works, I don't have a lot to say there. Um, I guess um, we typically ask Keith to come. Um, yeah. So I don't, don't really know much there other than the fact that, that um, and we talked about this, I think we talked about this last time, we're going to be looking into a feasibility study for, for, for a replacing the highway garage um, at some point this year. So that's a, a, an expense down the line that I think the town will have to consider. I thought I heard and this was rumor that there was some discussion about having some either police or the highway department staff move into the essentially largely unused space over there. Is that is that um there hasn't been any, an unsubstantiated rumor. There hasn't been any serious discussion about it. Okay. Um it's yeah, I think it's it's space that we have available if things are going to start to move at the if things start to shift around at the current highway fire police salt shit area i mean it's a transfer station it's it's space that we have available i mean it's a lot of square footage i mean isn't this a one zone building we heat the it's two it's two um, it's but it, it's better than 50 degrees you know it's, we keep it at 50 degrees because you're in the um I think that'll be part of the, the larger puzzle as as we go forward there. Um, the one thing that um, I mean, we don't have so so new pros not renting that anymore. They're transitioning over to their new place in, in South in South Deerfield at some point. Yeah. Um, but we don't have their rental income essentially, which which is not great, but. Um, insurance and benefits. Um, I I don't have much to say about those. Um, I'll get final numbers, you know, from from the insurance that we have. Group health insurance number. That's what the uh, Hampshire County Group Trust quoted. So that's a. It was a six percent increase, and um, there's a smaller increase there that Lynn recommends based on positions and things like that in, within the town. Um, once again, given these numbers, I would strongly encourage any kind of interviewing of new employees that the, these dollars be included in the uh, employment package. And I would highly recommend that those dollars be included uh, for um, current employees. Um, as to what the employment package is that they have in this town. So that um, the value of this is seen not only at home, but, is, but it's also seen with the individual as to um, what they make. Yeah. Yep. Now the, the 415,000, that includes uh, Waitley Elementary teachers, anybody that's on our health insurance. Yeah. 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 And I, I don't know, actually, I may not have printed out the break. Lynn usually does the, the printout of the breakdown. If it's not in there, many, I'll, I'll double check how many are on it. Yeah. You know, one, one of the great, one of the great mistakes when um, an employer is approaching um, uh, any kind of negotiation with an employee is that these types of costs don't enter into the discussion. Instead, what we hear is, oh, I only got a 3% raise. 
No, it's got nothing to do with percentage at all. It's no. got to do with the fact that you're making this, there, there is a pot of money that you receive for employment. And within that pot of money is salary and benefits. And those benefits have costs. And those costs are incurred by the taxpayers of this town. So that has to enter into those discussions. And, um, and if we don't do that, then, um, then, then we're not representing the people well. So what you're saying is, let's just think, we'll take that twenty-six thousand dollar increase. If there's twenty-six people on our health insurance, they each got a thousand dollar raise plus whatever they're going to get for a cola. Exactly, exactly. That is the employment sphere. All yep. of those monies together. That's the employment sphere. And as a finance com committee, we should be cognizant of that and watch the growth of that sphere so that it's not only salary but it's also the benefit package and as a, as a taxpayer you got to look at that that's no question no question um brian i have a question yeah. on the group health insurance from 2020 on this line keeps going up actually went down slightly once but it's been, more importantly, it's been underexpended significantly every year. Is that because of unfilled positions? Um, it, it, so it, it will fluctuate based on um, unfilled positions or those or filling positions for those people who don't take the insurance, essentially. So we have to budget for the full amount because we've underspent by 40, 40, 70,000. We budget the full big, amount. Big chunks. And we did. Yeah. Um, it's easier to budget for the full amount. Than no, no, I understand. You can't, you can't, right. you, you, you can't you take can go back in. Let's say we hire two people that want our health insurance. Right. You know, then we go back in and add more yeah, money. No, to I it. wasn't suggesting taking action no, about it. I just wanted I just, to understand it. Yeah. No. And, and the reason they were flat for a year or two or near flat was. Um, we, that's what we switched. There was, uh, oh, well, the, the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust um, had significant reserves. Mm -hmm. um, so they would spend down some of those reserves. And then another year, there was um, the, the trust voted to um, raise co pays on. Um, uh, raise the amount of co-pays that um, employees who were covered under the insurance paid for. Um, so that shifted cost. It, it essentially shifted cost to the employees at that point because it kept premiums lower, but people who use the insurance had to pay more. Um, so that's what happened one of those years as well. That's There was a, a bigger shift to the employees of the, of the costs that kept premiums down. Um, uh, retirement, retirement, uh, that's an assessment that we have. Um, there is currently um, a question before the, um, well, prior to uh, Governor Baker leaving office, there was a, a law that was passed that allows um, uh, regional retirement systems to provide an additional 2% COLA for FY23. Um, so the current fiscal year that went, there was a 3% COLA for retirees, and then this, which is the cap uh, that state law provides. So it loosened that cap and allowed up to 5% COLA for FY23 of uh, regional retirees. Um, and that's a question uh, currently before the select board, I think. Um, uh, the head of the regional, the Franklin Regional Retirement Board is going to be, uh, I think he's going to come on the 16th to the select board and sort of explain the requests and the calculations there. Um, but that will pass if two thirds of the municipalities that participate in the regional system uh, vote in favor of it. So there's more details on that, but I, I won't get into that. But um, that wouldn't hit us. That wouldn't hit municipalities until twenty FY twenty six, I believe, based on on how they calculate assessments, based on when they update their 
actuarial tables. Um, so, any questions on? So, uh, actually, uh, based on what you said, there's nothing we can do right now to edge on 2026. Uh, the increase in the uh, in the tax. Um, I, I mean, we could uh, we could. Do you mean set aside money for it? Yeah. Um, we could. I guess as long as we are aware of it and it's not a surprise, then I don't know. I just, you know, we know it's coming. So as long as we know it's coming, then Let's not be yes. caught unaware. In that case, you'd be setting capital aside for every project we know is coming in 10 years later. Yeah. Well, we, we can't, we don't have money to set money enough aside every year for. No, projects. no, oh, understood, man. but let's not be caught unaware. Um, it, it also, if I understand correctly, that if it's a COLA, it's not going to be a one shot deal. That would just get baked into the compensation from there on. So setting money aside for the first year doesn't help in years two, three, four, et cetera. Correct. I guess I misspoke. Um, I just want to make sure that um, as we move forward, that we are aware of the increases. And you know we make plans for them. I think we will where we can, um, but those discussions are going to have to come up again when we sit down and go and do a deeper dive into all of these different areas. So, so keep those questions on hand because they 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 will come they will surface again. I have a question about um, Medicare and Social Security. Yep. It's not a huge amount of money, but it, the percentage increase is significant. Can you explain just so I understand? Um, maybe. Lynn could explain better than I could. Um, but it's a certain percentage of, of, of salary that we pay. Um, so my understanding is that we didn't necessarily adjust it. When we added salary um, over the previous one or two years, so I think we might catch up um, or at least adjust that. Um, but it's a it's a it's a percentage of our salaries as based on what we pay. So. And catching up from not having from not having increased it over the last couple of years. Yeah. Right? The more people we have position, on the payroll, yeah. the more we got to pay. Got it. We pay a percentage of it. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. That's the very basic explanation. Yeah, that's good enough. No school budgets. Any questions on the school budgets? Well, they sure level funded. The operating budgets are zero, so we can deal with that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, debt service. We have two items that are lease purchase agreements um, for the excavator and the wood chipper. Are we getting to the end of them? Um, I think we have one more five years. 25, I think, might be the last year. Yeah. Maybe 26, but I, I think 25. Yeah, I have this one. It's like 26. Um, the meeting. Um, and um, I don't have an enterprise fund budget. Um, one of the things that the, the Del Water Commission are doing is having a comprehensive study of their operations with the intent of 
um, setting water rates that will fully support their op, you know, operating, future operating, and future capital needs. Um, that's something that we've been looking for for a long time. Um, again, this is this is the 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 main department that definitely generates its own revenue. Um, you know, the retained earnings are not are, are not huge. Um, I think it would be nice if they were a little higher. I think they were only at eighteen thousand. Um, so that's not uh, that's not a huge cushion. Um, the water merger project that's that's been a long time coming. That that has been completed, um, and um, you know the it is a single system now. Now we need to work on the the dissolution of the of the water district, but that's an administrative legal. You know, thing that needs to happen. Um, and everybody is on a single water system, which is good. Um, there's still outstanding debt for that project that will come due in um, October, I believe. Um, they did end up reborrowing. Um, it was it was going to be a one year $220,000 note. Um, but the timing of when the project was completed and when hookup fees were collected, it made sense for them to reborrow, although they'll have to repay those interest costs. Um, but um, all in all, I, I think it, it wasn't without hiccups, but I, I, I think the switchover, the, I think the end result is good. Um, the town has finally uh, installed by one of those water district switchover and 10 weeks after the switchover uh town meter was put in our houses which doesn't is probably mostly significant because the rate we didn't use is a whole lot of water so we just gave them 10 weeks of free water it would be great 10 weeks of free water too. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for no way to 10 weeks It's hard to arrange time for everybody. And there's only one guy. That's that's up to David and they don't show and you can't go in and change the meter. Okay. Oh, that means with many residents he's had problems. So that's I'll be quiet. Um if there's any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Um do we want to quickly run through and decide? Who should get invitations? Sure. Come back to the have discussions. Um, I don't know how you want to do this. Well, well just start start from the very beginning, and we'll go down the list, and we we will um, make arguments for and and or against. Um, obviously, general gov government. Um, that's you. Here, here. We've got you, you know, so you will be there. <laughs> I will be here. I hope, I hope, I hope you're there. Um, okay, go, culture and recreation services. Um, now, don't, wait a minute, be, before we go on, does anyone else have any um, input into the gen, general government um, individuals to come to the finance committee? Um, I think we should have the Conservation Commission come in, and even though we have an explanation of why, or you know, basically why they need another ten thousand dollars, I'd like to get. I actually, after that came up, I texted Scott, and he is willing to come in for the next meeting. Okay, so Scott is on. Yeah, and I'll I'll schedule. The folks that right. Um, they don't have uh, a uh, planning one. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm, we're good there. Okay. Culture recreation. Tri Town Beach and Rec Commission. Yep. And senior center. And senior center. Yep. Um 
do we want do, do would we like to have the library come in um i and the only reason i say that is it's um these um meetings are viewed by many out in the town and it gives the library and all the other departments a chance to uh you know talk about the benefits of those services that we have in town and um, um we don't have to the uh but um yes no what do you think it would be consistent with past years yeah, yeah. yeah. that's probably a good point paul though you know people want to see something from the library and right it's a big big thing in town will we um have a chance to look at the capital requests before these meetings so that if someone comes in who has both operating expenses that's and capital expenses part of our next meeting yeah. Right. That's I understand that we haven't done that yet, but but we yeah. will we will have looked at that before we have those department heads come in. So. Uh, I I can share the the ones that were submitted shortly. Okay. okay. Yeah. Just so we don't have to guess to the device. I'm good. Uh, public health transfers. Yeah, Franny, have Fran come in and yeah, speak yeah. the whole thing. Um, yeah, I think it's an important piece of, you know, what we need. Is that a good number from Foothills Health? That's what he told you to put in. Okay. Because that's what he told me to put in. I was going to say you. Usually that, that is difference, but yes, that's what I was told. Yeah, that's what you were told to put in, but in reality, it's going to be thirty thousand. Who the hell knows? Okay. All right, All right Fran. Okay. And he can talk about uh, solid waste or Franklin County solid waste management. Yep. Public safety. You want to have the fire department, Paul? I do. Um, this this will be the last time we see John, right? Um, well, uh, maybe. Uh, maybe. Unless oh. we want to be. You know, sort of I don't think it will ever be the last time you see John, but that's okay. no, 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 that's not possible. <laughs> but whoever, uh, whoever the new chief is, maybe. When are they going to make a decision? Well, we can. You know, obviously, he can. Uh, he can. Okay. It could be within a month. Okay. Well, let's wait. Yes, I'm going to push. We're going to push the fire department out a little bit, Paul. Okay. All right. And because they're trying to get a new chief picked, and then that person would be who we talk to. All righty. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so, South, South County. County. Yep. Um, now that we got this, tentatively have some numbers right um and i guess we'll have jim come in from the police department um, yeah. okay no, I'll have don do it. We'll, we'll have don do it this time <laughs> you know that'd be that would be refreshing you know, no, I, you love jim we love jim but you know a different angle would be refreshing okay okay um Jim is fine, you know. Um, anybody else on there? Uh, emergency manager, Franklin County? No. No. Okay. That's good. I guess we have Keith come in, same reason as the library, because we've had him come in every year. We might as well have him come in. So well, I think, I think it's good to have Keith come in uh, just to make sure he's a very responsible budget manager, that he's not under budgeting. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing we got to worry about. Right. <laughs> it never goes over. Right, exactly. True. True. Uh, and then, uh, okay. Those vehicle fuels. I mean, under classified. Okay. 
and he can speak to all of this. He can, and he can also speak to uh, the situation about, you know, the need for a new highway garage at some point, and we can, you know, start that dialogue, I guess. And so I think that's all positive. Yeah, and he has several capital items too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll cross check these with any larger capital items to make sure that yeah those folks come here. Yeah, they're included, so that, you know you don't have to make one trip. Okay, that's that's good. The whole insurance thing. There's not a lot we can do about it, and you have any answers that we would have yeah. probably, right? Yeah, Lynn, Lynn has usually been the perfect person, right? On a lot of that, so mm -hmm. just for that. Yeah. Okay, so it, she's been doing it in her role as treasurer and collector. Yeah, uh, yep. Okay, so that that person was so Lynn should come in again. Her before the twenty eight, she retires. Wow, she'll still be around. Mm -hmm. I hope so. <laughs> We're in a lot of trouble. We all hope she'll be around. Yep. I laugh because I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nervous laugh. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Okay. Here. Okay, let's keep going. Um, unclassified. Mm. Education. So for the schools, March 1st, right, is Waitley Elementary. Yep. In Franklin Tech. And then the Frontier budget hearing is March 7th, right? And that would be at Frontier. Yeah. Now, um, um, I love to hear Franklin Tech. Um, presentation they do a terrific job um, are, you, are you sure well I, I i think we have to control it a little bit and uh that's it um, you know ask for ask for just kind of like the high points and um keep keep it condensed and um you know maybe even put a time frame on it um <laughs> because uh, because um it's um they have an involved pre pre it's very good and it's it's uh let me tell you it, they do a great job of selling that school every time uh, but we bought the school and um we're not going to say no um but it's very good to hear why we are paying what we're paying but we got to control 15 it. minutes yeah good just a minute as we have more students going there so yeah. we're paying yeah sure sure Sure, and they have new programs, and it's always, you know, in, yeah. interesting to hear what they are and 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 what the outcomes they're looking for. I mean, my God, if uh, if we could get Waitley Elementary and Frontier Regional, I'll tell you, we should have them come to the meeting that for Franklin County. Have Franklin County go on first with a full blown presentation to show them <laughs> what it should look like. So um, why don't we do that? Well. <laughs> Because we, um, we don't want to sit through that. <laughs> yeah. We we don't have youth on our side. That's that's pretty much why. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. So Waitley Elementary on three one, and then Frontier, at Frontier on three seven. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, and um. I, you know, we're heading towards uh, the middle of February. So um, we've been uh, told that we will have those bud budgets, but I'll be very um, uh, happy. Well, I'll be happy to get them, but I'll I'll tell you if if we get them the day before the meeting or the day of the meeting, and we sit around and we're asked if we support those numbers now if you haven't had a chance to go through the numbers you in reality can't say yes you right. can't so you. um that's that's pretty much how i feel about it 
Okay. Um, anybody else? Anything else? Anyone else we would like to see? No? Okay. Okay, Roger. Right. Plug those in, you know, so like the next meeting, which is the whatever it is, the 21st, we're going to have four of them, maybe. Paul, do we want to get a report from Wayne on the water department? Oh, yeah. good pickup. Good pickup, Fred. Yes, yeah. yes. You should give us an update on the conversion. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, for sure. We got to have water. Yep. Fire in the back. Yeah. We'll push fire out. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so, um, Brian, what do you think about how, how to split this up? <clears throat> um, I, I mean, usually it's just plug and play based on availability. Yeah. Um, unless we have preferences like fire could come later. Yeah. Um, even police, we might not want to do right away. So, so I mean, who's really ready? I mean, highway, conservation, um, library, right down beach, library, South County Senior Center. Okay. I would give recreation a little bit of time to breathe. Um, it, right. It right, really is. Transportation. Yeah. PMS should be ready. Yes. So, so as that. always, as always, you put the schedule together based on availability. You'll let let us know, and we'll come prepared to have a discussion with those individuals coming that night. So yeah. that's how we'll do You'll it. You'll know well in advance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any uh, anybody have any questions, thoughts that they would like to add to the to this meeting for upcoming meetings as we move into the year? Okay. Brian, is there anything else on your end? I don't have anything else. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Okay. Second. Okay. Roll call. Tom? This is yes. on the chairman of the meeting. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Patty? Yes. Donna? Yes. Dan? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Paul? Yes. This meeting is adjourned.